Hello, I'm Reverend Dr. Lucian Baker, pastor of Christ the King Community Church, and this is our CTK story. We're sitting here in our red sweaters to make it even more effective. <laughs> this is my wife, Jill Baker, who is also my assistant pastor. She helps me in so many ways. She's very sweet. So I guess I should get about telling the genesis of this story. Um, some time ago, about 20 and a half years ago, I was pastoring a church called Pleasant Hill Free Will Baptist. And uh, I knew that my time there had reached its completion. So I told my wife, Jill, it's time for me to step down. And she said, No, it's not. <laughs> I didn't she, want to leave. <laughs> no, she didn't want to leave the church. But it was my time. And I knew that was what God was telling me. But it was, it was difficult for us to leave that church because we loved it so. But... I thought I was going to be an evangelist, and I gotta tell you, I really, really was looking forward to being an evangelist where I could go in and stir up all of the feathers and then leave and let the next pastor try to put it all together again. But we came up this way because, well, some of you already know that Carol had said, if I get you a place to preach, will you preach? Well. To me, it sounded like an evangelistic crusade, so I was ready to go. And that's how we started. And I drug her along with me, and she didn't put up too much fight, I don't think. No, I thought it was okay because we really didn't have any plans for Easter that year. And we had tried several churches, you know, to find a home church, uh, a home church for us so that I could evangelize and still have a home church. And that didn't work out too well for us, did it? No. We couldn't find any church we liked. <laughs> uh, I guess if you can't find a church you like, you need to start one. So since I was already there, no, that's not exactly what happened. I was still going to be an evangelist, uh, but they said, well, if we all come back next week, would you come back and preach for us? And so for the beginning of our church, it was week to week. I really wasn't committed at that point. But after about two months, it occurred to me that we had quite a little congregation there already and, uh, and it looked like it was going to be impossible for me to leave them. And uh, my children were still going to Pleasant Hill Free Will Baptist Church and uh, so my mom and dad came, a few of the others got together and, and the church started. You got it on pause? You should have, the phone's ringing. I'll just cut. You're going to edit that? Yeah, I'll cut. Should have Yeah, I should have. Well. Long as I Hell it is. Tim is starting with this, I think. Yeah. Now, my daughter, Tammy, uh, was with me in the very beginning. And i got to tell you, Tammy was an... Was an you know, my phone continues to ring. I'm going to go turn it off so that we can complete this. I want that on the tape. <laughs> As usual, whatever the pastor wants to do, there is what I call interruptus allatus. I'll be back. <laughs> and with Tammy being there, it was excellent for us because she was a great alto. We didn't have much of a music program in the very beginning. Brother... Uh, Steve was leading the congregational numbers, uh, him, I, Marilyn, or anybody that we could find. We did what we could to put together some music for uh, the uh, genesis of our church. But the church continued to grow. Uh, many souls got saved. Uh, matters of fact, uh, in the first, I would say in the first year and a half of our church, before we got into the new building, there were over a hundred new converts both at our church and at the hospital as people began to talk about what God was doing uh, at Christ the King. And uh, the services were good. Or at least I think they were good. What do you think? I mean, you know, you had to listen every Sunday. <laughs> they were good. 
that all you're going to say? Yeah. <laughs> it could have been excellent. You should say excellent. Excellent, okay. See, a good pastor's <laughs> wife knows when to say the word excellent. excellent. Yeah. So uh, the church uh, began, and I think um, we had a real desire uh, to reach out. We felt that God had placed us there. And I got to tell you, for me, that was, uh, that was a major revelation because I, I was sure that I was to be an evangelist uh, and not a pastor again. Um, because I've been pastoring now for over 40 years. And I think there comes that time that you're about ready to break under the pressure. So if any of you people are waiting for a counseling session, uh, what I, I suggest you just go ahead and see Bob now, because my schedule, uh, you know, I'm going to Savannah, I want to go to Charleston and Florida, I want to see a few things, and after 40 years, a man deserves it. However, I'll keep preaching until the Lord decides that I'm finished with you guys. You staying with me? Of course. You ain't bored yet? No, you're never bored. Did you hear that? I'm never boring. That's why she is number one as the assistant pastor. That kind of assistance lifts you up. Of course, we've been married now for 47 years, and I think that's going to work out pretty well. Do you need counseling? No. Thank God for that. Remember, you have to go to Bob because I'm not doing it. Uh, I do need counseling. I've, I've said that time and time again. I don't think anybody does what this pastor does without counseling. He needs some definite counseling. But we have done some very unique things at Christ the King. Going back uh, and, and looking at the Old Testament and how the Old Testament spoke to the New Testament church. And we applied some of those things. And that's why our church grew the way that it did, I think. Uh, even to the temple hallway which still attracts a tremendous amount of attention as people go through there and, and they ask questions. I said, what, what does this really mean? I mean, usually a church always takes up an offering and we don't, we've left it out in the hallway. However, let me just say this, just because we don't take up one on Sunday doesn't mean you need to bypass the treasury. Remember, Jesus was standing by the treasury when the widow came in with her two little mites and if you haven't been putting any mites in there, he's watching. Well, Juan is here. You know how he always teases me about the fact that I talk about money a lot. I wouldn't have to talk about it if you guys would just give a lot. <laughs> Let's see, what else can I tell you? I did tell you that there was over 120 people that were saved, both at, our, at, the, at the new church and uh, at the hospital. And since that time, our attendance has been over 200 on a regular basis. Uh, this previous Easter, our attendance uh, swelled to about 370, 380, somewhere around there. The word is getting out that CTK is the place to go. And uh, the Lord has blessed and blessed and blessed. I believe that when you come in there, when you sit down in that pew, something's going to happen. I believe that God is going to speak to you. I believe you're going to be blessed think that if somebody comes to CTK, whether it's in our children's church, which is uh, amazing, or if it's a regular worship service, it's also amazing. God has placed his blessing uh, upon our church. I, I think that that's the greatest thing that I can say about CTK is it's been blessed. Yeah? Yes. You notice that she doesn't add a lot to this because she's a, she is a very shy person, but I've also noticed that uh, when Danny's singing, <laughs> she's got her hands in the air and on occasion now when I'm preaching I've noticed she's had her hands in the air remember if you hear Jill shout look up your redemption draweth nigh we're that close to the rapture <laughs> am I going to get in trouble for that oh, are you going to have him take it out did I think that the church would last for 20 years was I thinking that far ahead that's a, that's a really good question and I got to tell you, to be honest with you, I was looking at the next service in the very beginning, just the next service, because we didn't have a lot. And uh, I was thinking what it would take just to have the next service and whether the next service was going to be something that would impact people. Uh, I think that once we got into the new building, 
I think at that moment in time, it, it occurred to me that I was pastoring a growing church and that I, it was necessary for me to be there. Uh, I didn't know that I would be there 20 years. You know, I'm 67 years old and that worries me a little because I would like to see young preachers coming up and, and trying to buck me out of the pulpit because they just feel that they got that preacher's itch. They've got that God delivered empowerment. I don't see much of that anymore. And I'm hoping as God continues to bless our church, we will. Um, but yeah, I, I, or in the very beginning, I don't know that I thought I'd be there 20 years. Uh, but as our church continued to develop, I realized that the foundation that we had built was a strong foundation. And it was a foundation built upon the Word of God. I don't preach a lot of denominationalism. And I have found that preaching about Jesus Christ, crucified, risen from the dead, and ascended back to the Father, allows all of us to come together under the cross without conflict. And it's kept us together. We have a potpourri of religiosity in our church. We have Catholics and Lutherans and Presbyterians and Baptists and uh, Pentecostals and uh, the list goes on. If there's something out there, we probably have at least one representative. But. God, by His Word, has kept us all together at the foot of the cross. And so that foundation has been strong enough to weather a lot of difficulty that have come our way. I'm sure that I've made some mistakes as pastor. Um, maybe not always said the right things or done the right things. But somehow God allowed that foundation to be strong enough to weather those storms. And uh, the church grew. Uh, I think that both of us um, if, if I wasn't pastoring there, I, I don't know where we would go to church. Um, I was kind of hoping whoever the next pastor is that I could stay on, but uh, because it's that good a church. Um, that's difficult sometimes because uh, the flavor of the old fella remains. So either God's going to have to give me a second win and I'll pass to you guys until the rapture or God will give the right man at the right time and everything will be perfect because the foundation that we built this church on is pretty special, I believe. And it's still growing today. A favorite memory was when we did uh, uh, the Feast of the Tabernacles. Uh, it was the first time that we had done something. We stepped out and, and people were camped out all over the campgrounds. And it was a, it was a glorious time. And uh, we did the Feast of the Tabernacles. And uh, at the very end, uh, you know, the Bible says that when they were out uh, 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 and in their wandering, the Jewish nation, they were all baptized under the same cloud. And uh, we had put together this little booth that looked like a cloud and uh, there was freezing cold water coming down out of that. And, and my mother, who was uh, crippled, she, she wanted to go through. She wanted to be baptized with the rest of the church. And we, on that day, we were going to baptize the whole church uh, through this cloud. And, and we were all excited about it. And... Uh, so my mother said to me, she said, if you'll hold on to me, I'll go through that. And uh, so we started off and you know, we got in there and the water was coming down on us. It was cold and she wouldn't move. She just, she wanted to stay in. And so I finally got her out and she said, let's go through it one more time. So we, we went around, got back in the line and, and mom and I went through it another time. That's one of my favorite memories. But as far as laughable moments, Sometimes I get tickled in the, pu in the pulpit and when I do, my preaching is done because I start laughing and I just, I don't know when to stop too well. <laughs> what about you? What's your favorite memory, do you think? Marzetta's father got saved. He was 90 some years old, yeah, I believe. Yeah, yeah. That was really special. And, and he was crippled and he did not want us and, to come yeah, back and pray with him in the pew. He wanted to walk up to the altar. It was like Evelyn's uh, and uh, Scott's uh, grandma. And when the, she and she was up there in, 
yeah. I, I guess it's not because they're so old and they came to the altar. It is because of the fact that God's gospel is strong enough to reach a person, even in the twilight of their time. And uh, I guess those were, yeah, real special times. The way that CTK has changed our lives, well, I gotta tell you, the most profound way is I'm not comfortable now at other churches. I should be. It's not that I cannot worship with them. I'm still, I still preach in a lot of churches, uh, but there's just something about that place that grabs a hold of you and doesn't want to let you go. There's something, I guess, the feeling of expectation on any on any given Sunday morning that something great is about to happen. You know that old song, "I just feel like something good is about to happen," and that's the way I am. I I I, I just feel on any given Sunday it's going to happen. And I don't know why always, but I believe it'll always be in order because the people follow the Bible very well. Still gonna be the pastor there. <laughs> well, in the next, what years? I next to see in the next 20 years, a walker, <laughs> a lift, a uh, lift, oxygen. Um, I won't be able to get up. You guys will have to get me a lift just to get me up in the pulpit. Um, what I would like to see for the church. A young pastor coming in. Yeah, yeah. I'd like to see a young, fired up man of God sent there. And one other thing, and it is the thing that that bothers me greatly is, and, and I told our church about three years ago, I said that in five years, you wouldn't recognize the churches uh, anymore. I believe with all of my heart that there would be a great falling away. Uh, I was reading an article uh, about the fact that we have now what's called the 75% Christian. In other words, they come at least three times a month. But they, they figure that one time a month is not, you know, if they're off, they're off. It doesn't matter. Church loyalty is becoming less and less important. But now, the polls suggest that very, very shortly, we're going to go to the 50% Christian, where they're gonna figure if they come two weeks out of the month, that'll be sufficient. But the church as we know it today cannot survive with a 50% Christian. It's kind of like you, you've you heard people talk about marriage and they say, well, marriage is a 50-50 proposition and it is not. It's 100%, 100%. If I decided to hold back 50% from Jill and she holds back 50% from me, that marriage is never gonna work. It's the same thing in the church. 50% of our resources would be gone every week. 50% of our income would be gone every week. And the things that we would hope to accomplish would never happen. And the church is heading in that direction. So listen to me, even now on this 20th year celebration, keep your eye focused upon the Lord. Don't back up or too near home. It's supposed to be a short interview and it's already what a half an hour to 45 minutes it's a good thing we didn't dress up for this because you know if i'd have had my collar on i'd have been preaching big time so no to the church just let me say this i love you very very much i'm proud to be your pastor and i think jill is also proud uh, of our church Let's, let's, let's don't give up. Let's do what we can to push it to the next level. There are great things that are just over the hill. Let's go on to completion.